Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are Tuesday's God's Church of Love online, and we are reading Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also accomplished about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Yes, and we do have to resist the devil. We have to resist our flesh. We have to resist the enemies that are right here on the face of this earth that are fighting against us. And we have to resist our flesh, our reactions. It's really crazy how, you know, we have to this was the thing that got me, was consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. When you're weary and faint in your minds, things can be harder to deal with. Sometimes when we go through the contradiction of sinners, like what Davina is going through at her job. That's why I was tripping when she said that, because I had had this already set up. <clears throat> and that's what came to my mind was wearied in your mind. And I looked it up and it said, um, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And I said, wow, okay. So that worked out. But the bottom line is, is when we get wearied in our minds, it's worse than being wearied in our body. You can be wearied in your body and be on cloud nine about the day and be glowing and, I mean, just enjoying the afterglow and you're just so sleepy, you can barely keep your eyes open, but you're going to bed feeling all warm and fuzzy because the day was beautiful. But when you're wearied in your mind, your whole body loses energy. You lose your 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 spunk. You use you 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 lose that that creative flow. You lose that desire, that drive. You 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 lose your hope. You lose your encouragement. You lose your I mean, everything just starts to look dark and gloomy when you're faint and weary in your mind. It's very serious to be faint and weary or weary and faint in your mind. That's not the place you want to be tired. Be tired in your body. That's normal. You can always get rest. But when you're weary in your mind, that's much harder to bounce back from. So you have to constantly pray over and guard your mind as you pray over and guard your heart. Because what ends up happening when the mind is wearied and faint, you gain weight. Oh, Lord, the, not that. Yes, the weight of the world, the weight of your cares, the weight of your emotions, the weight of your wounds, the weight, it just, the world seems to weigh down on you. It's like a monkey on your back and you can barely get one foot in front of the other because you're so weighed down with this heaviness. You feel burdensome. You feel bothered. You, it's, it's really, you do not want to be wearied in your mind. So you must pray against that. See, when I came from the hospital in ICU, they had me in the bed for 12 days. I only started walking around the last three days before I came home. And I had to ask for that because I didn't want my legs to be so rubbery 
that I couldn't hold my own weight up. And I was heavier then than I am now. So I noticed the effort it took to put one foot in front of the other, how, how much of an effort it took just to stand for more than a minute. It's like, oh my God, I got to sit down. I got to sit down. Let me tell you, when you are wearied in your mind, it is hard to walk in the ways of God. It's hard to fathom doing everything his way because what he requires takes more effort for us than just doing things our way. And if you're wearied in your mind, you're feeling weak, you're feeling listless. It's very difficult to function in a normal state, let alone try to rise to the occasion of God's standards. It's even harder. So mm -hmm. the reason you don't want to be wearied in your mind, you have to pray against that big time. And that's why Satan, he does the battle. He does the warfare in your mind. Because the, the, the effort is to wear out the saints, to wear down your mind, wear down your resolve, wear down your heart, your emotions. And if he can wear you down, baby, you can barely carry yourself. I, I could not get from the front door to the walkway without stopping and resting. And that's only about a 25-foot walk. I couldn't make it without resting two or three times. I had to literally stop, catch my breath, and, and I'd be leaning on the little patio chairs. And oh my goodness, I just want to turn around and go back in and sit down. <clears throat> my heart was weak physically. My heart was weak. It was under strain. My body was weak. Now, had my mind been weak, I might have died during that time in ICU. But God kept my mind. God guarded my spiritual heart. So that even though my physical heart was weak, my spirit man was strong. But that's why a lot of people die in the hospital when their minds get weak and faint, when they get weary, weary and well-doing. So pray against that. That's just my quick word of exhortation. Pray against being wearied in your mind, being faint in your mind and in your heart. Pray against that because that is Satan's strategy. Not natural, it's Satan's strategy to beat you down and grind you to dust so you're not even any good for yourself, let alone God. So keep that in mind, and you guys guard against that, pray against it, rebuke it, do whatever you have to do, but become a pit bull in the spirit realm. And latch on to God's holiness. Latch on to God's ways. Latch on to your faith. Grit it between your teeth and shake it until you make it. But don't let that bad boy go. That's it. Be encouraged, you guys. No matter what comes against you, no matter who comes against you, you be encouraged because you got the right one on your side. You hear me? God is for you, not against you. God is with you. You're not alone. <laughs> Hello. God is behind you. He's got your back. And God is in front of you, clearing the way. Making the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. God's working all things for your good. God bless you. Be encouraged.